Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and welcome back to the final part of Under the Hammer, where Wargaming have released five rare and exclusive tanks. Today is going to be the Type 59 Gold, and there are 2,000 available on the European server, and the bidding is starting at 25,000 gold. So this is going to be the most expensive vehicle that has been released so far, if you're excluding probably the Object 268 version 5, which went for free experience. So the Type 59 Gold, this thing has been sold quite a few times. I think it was in a black market uh, two or three years ago. The original price was 25,000 gold. There were 500 of them available or maybe a thousand available on the European server and it was the first people to be able to click them in the garage that were able to get them. Then in the subsequent black market I believe that the vehicles went for I think it was 40,000 gold or at least I saw some people purchasing it for that price in a bidding war. And then I believe in last year's black market, Wargaming actually ended up enabling you to get it for just a key, which I think everybody could purchase and you could get one of the tanks that you didn't have. And I think it cost 5,000 gold to be able to purchase that key to the mystery hangar. And so it's actually kind of hilarious that a lot of people got this thing for 5,000 gold, which is probably one of the best deals in World of Tanks history when you think about it, considering its rarity. And now... 2,000 of you are probably going to part with 25,000 gold to be able to get your hands on this. I expect that there'll be some whales out there who feel like this is the one that they miss. In today's video, I'm going to play the Type 59 Gold, and I'm going to talk about it in the current meta of World of Tanks. And let's get ourselves an extra field mod. What are we going to take? Accuracy or are we going to take Dispersion? Clearly, we're going to take Accuracy on this tank. So just very, very quickly, I want to run down the statistics of the Type 59 so you can understand whether it's actually a good tank in 2021. And I'm going to be comparing it to the, the 122 TM. And I should probably also be comparing it to the T34 III as well. Now, keep in mind that the Type 59 and the T34 III have preferential matchmaking, so they never have to meet Tier 10 tanks, whereas the 122 TM does. So right off the bat, we see that the Type 59's gold DPM is actually pretty good at just shy of 1,900. And that's because this tank just seems to get buffed and buffed and buffed. Wargaming can't have the original special tier 8 premium falling behind all of the other new ones they put into the game. They don't feel the same way about a lot of other tanks. Let me uh, add that in quickly. This DPM is great. The pen, however, is disappointing at 185. Its gold pen is 241, which again is disappointing, especially when you compare it to the 122's amazing 233 millimeters on its standard rounds and 299 on its premium rounds. But of course, when your DPM is literally 50% more, then you, you get to really put out the damage. That is if you're getting to fire multiple times, because the 122TM has a wonderful 400 alpha compared to the Type 59 Gold's 250. If we take a look at the gun handling of the Type 59, this is always something that surprises me. And that, is, that is that its gun handling is actually really nice. Two seconds aim time, pretty good gun handling as well, and pretty nice accuracy. This thing always performs when it comes to just engaging tanks and keeping on moving and combine that with seven degrees of gun depression this vehicle is fairly flexible just a little bit more than the t34-3 a little bit less than the 122-tm not not incredible gun depression but by no means bad especially for this kind of pseudo soviet tank the mobility of this vehicle as well is pretty outrageous because it gets good ground resistances 18 power to weight and a fabulous top speed limit of 60 forwards and 20 backwards will mean that you will run rings around the 122 tm but just don't ram anything and don't get rammed by anything either because the 36 tons this tank packs is not going to really keep you up in some kind of mortal combat ram duel so the, the tank traverse as well is fabulous at 46. You can easily be able to engage all your opponents. And this means that you can take the first field mod that probably lowers your traverse speed, but increases your ammo rack uh, performance, as well as your gun handling while your gun is damaged. Armor wise, this tank is really good for a vehicle that never has to meet tier 10s. And the vehicle's turret always surprises me that even if you're not using any of your gun depression, it's like 270. And if you are using your gun depression, yeah, good luck. It's 300 millimeters of pen. Even gold rounds on something like a TS-5, as I found out, are not going to be enough to reliably go through this thing. It does have some cupolas on top of the tank that you're going to have to watch out for. And its hull armor is not great unless you're fighting against tier 6 and tier 7 tanks, which this tank used to fight a lot of, but not these days now that there are just so many high tier vehicles playing in the game. Add on to that 380 meters view range, which gives it a 10 meter advantage to the 122TM. And that means that you can just about with the right 
crew and equipment get to a point where you don't need to use coated optics uh yeah but you're definitely gonna have to use a premium consumable if you want that to be the case Alrighty then so without further ado i'll play a few rounds in the gold type 59 so you can see if it's going to be something that's going to be worth bidding on and oh, immediately fairly juicy matchup this tank creates nice matchmaking for tier eights and tier nines let me tell you all those preferential matchmaking tanks whenever they sign up they enable a tier eight and a tier nine or a tier nine tank to have nice matchmaking where they don't have to play against tier tens now look I'm a bit of a role player uh, on Twitch when I play this tank. I always role play because it used to be like the biggest whale tank. You know, 25,000 gold used to be such an outrageous thing to pay for something. However, now that's not even really the case. So I usually only use gold rounds of premium consumables, but I don't know. I'm going to go for regular consumables uh, in this case. And also, I'm going to go for coated optics. So keep in mind that I'm not going to be using vertical stabilizers on this tank. And I just remembered that I'm probably going to crash my stream again, just like I did yesterday, because I failed to open up one of my programs. But hopefully, we should be okay now. Don't worry about the black screen for a second. Ah, there we go, great. I'm not sure if any of you saw the blooper at the end of um, yesterday's video. Well, that's interesting. It actually loads gold as standard there at the beginning of the battle. I guess that's because I was, ooh, hello, Hotchkiss. Hello, Hotchkiss, you want some, you want some, you want some, I'll give it to you. Man, this thing's mobility is just so darn good. It really is. It really is fabulous mobility. But it's funny because seeing how the AMBT was just sold yesterday, it, it's kind of scary when you look at a tank like this that you're only doing 250 alpha damage, whereas that thing's got a little autoloader. But this thing has better DPM. Uh, it doesn't take that kind of like 13 seconds to reload your final shell, albeit. That was a really bad shot. Hopefully I don't have any like wake up vibes like I did yesterday. It took me a while to actually start to play the game in yesterday's video. Oh, what's this groggy baby in the morning? Yeah, I don't know. That's Wargaming in their Under the Hammer auction. Alright, alright, alright. Shall I get forwards? Shall I try and pull back? Shall I try and get in this bush? I, that, that Hotchkiss is just being crazy right now. I have got a really good view range right now, but I don't seem to be finding anything. Oh, this is such a good matchup. I'd love to try and do something a little bit cheeky, be a little bit aggressive. That T29 is kind of being really irritating to that 1375. He's most likely going to get spotted and get that 1375 shot, which is really not a nice move. Uh, I want to try and get this player, but I can't really manage it. I don't really want to... Oh, hello. Hello, son. We have a customer. He's aiming up. There we go. And I should easily be able to get two rounds, and he doesn't even spot me, because of course those heavy tanks don't have much going for them. So the T29's getting absolutely clapped. Um, these guys are really making my life uh, a pain here. Oh, I wasn't even spotted, and I got hit by the arty because they missed the T29. Oh, just stop it. Just stop it, T29s. Please go and do something else with your existence because you're ruining the game for me in the 1375 here. And the guy's got two marks of excellence. He clearly knows what he's doing, kind of, at least some of the time. But uh, he's not really making our lives good right now. Why doesn't he just fall back? Why don't you just, why don't you just fall back and stop messing everybody's life up, dude? He keeps trying to bang his head against the wall of sitting in that position. I'm going to tell him to fall back again. Just fall back. Let the 1375 play. No? Okay, dude. Whatever. Whatever. It's probably one of the last tanks that I would ever... Uh, last positions that I would ever take a T29 into on this map. I mean, hanging back there at the start, maybe. Blooming two T29s. Anyway, let's focus on the Type 59 gold. Let's not focus on the T29s, who clearly probably didn't even have enough view range to be able to catch these tanks out. Did I just auto-aim like a complete scrubbing up? We'll get there, though. The IS-2-2 is trying to shove across. I won't be able to get them from there. Oh, there's that AMBT that we want to be able to get. I was actually spotting him. Hmm. Didn't quite catch the shot in the top. I'm okay, though. The tanks that I'm really worried about is the fact that they have a Skoda T-56. This game's a real slow one. Isn't this deja vu to when I had was playing the AMBT the other day, by the way? Hey, talk about AMBT. I just managed to kill one. The T-29 is now managing to get the shots in. Do you think I should push? 
think I should. Let's go have some fun. That's what gold type 59s want to do, right? Just want to have fun. Wasn't a good shot. Just hoping I could magically loop my shell around the corner. Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Not like this. Why is he really coming out? He won't be coming out much longer as we track him and lock him down and do two crits. Wow, that was really lucky for him that he managed to catch my uh, upper hull at that kind of an angle. I gotta watch out now because all it takes is like the Shigoda T56 and I'm gonna get absolutely, totally smashed. Um, do you know what I wish I'd done? I wish I'd gone and attacked him through the west. I don't feel like I've nailed this game, to say the least. Um, it's been a weird one with the way that it's developed. They've got two TDs, so i got to watch out for those players. I don't really want to get caught by that Skoda. If I get caught by that Skoda, I can lose this game. You know what? Let's play carefully. Let's play carefully. Let's go across over towards the west and try and help out our team, and let's not get caught like a donkey, okay? That sounds good. Let's make our way west. And just play nice and tight. Nice and tight. That's what we want to do. Because I could easily push down there, but... Go to T56 and friends could absolutely annihilate me. Whereas if I make my way over towards the west, I I'm probably should be able to catch out the vision. What a shame that our 1375 got shut down. I wonder who it was who was spotting him there. All right. Well, oh, the AMBT has just changed flanks. Is this a misplay to be able to come over here and just try? Because they could have TDs in those bushes. But they surely would have been spotted if that was the case, right? Let's go and take a look. Let's try and use this position. I've got my coated optics set up on this tank. I should be able to possibly spot out on things. Let's get forwards again. Nothing spots me? Okay. So the next thing that worries me is clearly whoever's going to be at the back there. And considering that the Udez has a kill on the enemy team, that strongly suggests to me that the Udez and the Type 59 are going to be on this flank. Hopefully I can manage to spot without getting spotted. Man, if there's a Udez in those bushes, I'm not in a good situation. Whoa, the duel begins. Regular Type 59 versus Gold Type 59. Who will win? Well, of course, he's got a Udez friend, so that's not good for us, is it? But I got a Leo friend. And I got this hull down Hellcat that I can manage to engage as well. 140 damage? Wow, that Leo's using the baby gun. All right, this is incredibly awkward now. I have entered the world's most awful stalemate. So I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to leave this, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to hope he's going to come around the corner, because if he does, he, he'll get nailed by my friends. So I'm going to sit here outside the proxy spotting. This guy's thinking about going up into the bushes. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to leave to the next set of bushes so I can slowly manage to make my way... away my way away because that's just it's just not a, a skill based fight there it's just the Udez can get me hopefully the Udez doesn't spot me when I do this he doesn't good 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 it's such a slow game all right I'm gonna take it to the next ridge I'm gonna take it to the next ridge and try and see if I can get some more vision forwards as well and this is where the type 59 is just such a nice tank it's fast it's got gun depression it's got enough view range unlike a lot of vehicles if you take your coated optics on it, you have a real good view range. The ISU-152 just got spotted over on the other flank. Hmm. Such a bizarre game with that Udez chilling at the back, and I've got no hope of ever being able to see him. You know what? Maybe I can make a power play. I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it, YouTube, okay? I'm gonna risk it. I'm going to risk it. I'm gonna make a power play against these players. Alright? That's a good start. How about we get rid of the arty for our team? Does he have sixth sense? Yes, he does. I got spotted. That's not good. Who the hell spots me? Now the Type 59 is going to come across. I think our power play might come into a power trip to the garage in a second. Type 59's locked in place, which is always nice. Looks like the Udez might have seen me. I can take three shots from the Udez unless he high rolls. Okay, there's one. Is he panicking? It's two. How does he high roll so high? Alright, 
Well, now I die to the Type 59, who, of course, is firing gold. Ah, oh, no, I don't. I... One bounce, please. Why do I low roll and they high roll so much? So you got me? Ah, he does. Oh, well, I tried to make the power play. The Type 59 gold caught me good. The Udes caught me gold. Maybe I could have sat on this kind of a position, hold down against them. Hopefully my Carnarvon manages to push through now and gets the Type 59. He does. Hopefully our Shkoda 256 isn't sucking in the town. Yeah, we should have this one. All right, I made an aggressive play. I wanted to try and, you know, do what the Type 59 does, which is make exciting stuff. And at least I got rid of the Udes. That was nice. Uh, would have been uh, would have been cool if maybe the Carnarvon had hit the Udes twice there. Uh, I don't think he did. Uh, so I had to actually ram the Udes, which was actually pretty cool. I didn't take any damage from it. I guess I got lucky that I bounced the Udes once. Uh, but unfortunately, that second high roll for 441 did mess me up. I probably should have thought about maybe going here behind the bunker where I wasn't going to get isolated by the Type 59 gold. But GG. I wanted to see if the armor would work out a little bit. And it looks like we maybe avoided one of the Type 59 shells, but it wasn't a ricochet. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really particularly happy with my result here. 2,300 damage and 1,100 spotting in a nice matchup and map like this is not a great result for the Type 59. But you still got to see, all in all, it's kind of dynamic nature. It's all-purpose tank. I mean, it's a blooming Type 59. It's been in the gold. It's been in the gold forever. Uh, no, it's been in the game forever, quanky baby. But uh, 25,000 gold for a skin... Well, here's the interesting thing about paying 25,000 gold for this tank. Firstly, it's extortion, right? You could spend 25,000 gold on multiple tier 8 premiums. You could have bought the AMBT nearly two times over on the EU server if you got the minimum bid for the price tag of the Type 59 gold. And that is, you could buy a brand new tier 8 premium that was limited release. And you could buy two other tier 8 premiums as well. At full price. Well, you could buy like another tier 8 premium at full price inside the uh, the tech tree. Uh-oh, this isn't looking good now. I took that much. Go on, you can do it. For the price of the Type 59 gold. And so from that perspective, I think that it's outrageously priced. It really is. Um, but on the other hand, the Type 59 gold isn't even available. It isn't even available uh, for a lot of people. So that's awkward as well. And when I say it's not available, what I mean is, is that you can't just buy a Type 59. Wargaming, I, I, I can't remember the last time that Wargaming sold the Type 59 just in a package. Uh, how did I manage to get my original Type 59? A lot of you might be asking. Well, I got my original Type 59 because I built my brother a PC. I mean, he paid for the parts, but I did, I did the labor. And then he bought me a Type 59, which was really nice. Back in the day, you could get them for like 7,500 gold. Um, so yeah, you could buy a Type 59 back in the day for like 20 pounds or something. And it was one of my first premium tanks. It was a really nice gift of him. And little did he probably know just how special it would become in the game, uh, even after all of these years. And that's really where the uh, you can be sure about the Type 59, because it has longevity in the game. Even now, it is competing with brand new premium tanks that go into it. It just remains and it just stays. And also, this tank does have kind of like that buffing pedigree that it seems to be like a little bit of a baby of wargaming and that they'll never um, let it get behind the, the meta of other vehicles. All right, so definitely not the best game I've ever had in the Type 59 Gold. 1,124 base. We did nearly 4,000 combined, um, and we made a, a good amount of credits, uh, 213,000 credits, although 80,000 of that was for some kind of an event. Um, so I don't know, maybe I've just got too high expectations in a matchup like that for the Type 59 Gold. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's try and go after the enemy team once more. And again, am I going to go full re role play? Nah, whatever. I'll just fire regular rounds like I was pretty much doing in that last game. Let's not worry about that. Do I want gun handling or do I want view range on this map? Did you notice how good the gun handling was even without vertical stabilizers on this tank? If you have a really good Chinese medium crew, you could probably get, get away without using vertical stabilizers at all on this vehicle. And either invest in coated optics or invest even in a turbo if you wanted to go really fast. But I think this tank is really quick already, and I don't think a turbo would be a good idea. But that's just my opinion, and you should all do what you feel matches your play style. 
All right, so Type 59 Gold, where are we going to take the vehicle? Um, well, I'm going to start here with my coated optics, try and get a little bit of spotting against my opponents. And look at that, I'm actually keeping up with a Borask. That shows you just how fast this tank is. Um, I got spotted. That's really not very cool. Some good view range for the EBR there. The camera rating on this vehicle is not too bad, especially when you get a concealment crew. But I will mention that I don't think that all of my crew have concealment yet. Where's this guy going? Into my shell. That's where he's going. You want some more, bro? I'll give it to you. I'm trying to predict how he moves. No, I thought he was going to turn towards the right. He didn't. I have to admit, I love how dynamic this vehicle is with regards to its uh, rate of fire. Mm, not good. I need to hit this guy. This guy is one of the most important tanks. He's in the river. Is he going to come up again? Yes, he is. Should have taken the shot. What's this bat chat doing? Oh, the enemy's light tanks are being so aggressive right now. I kind of let my, uh, my bat chat down there by not hitting the EBR twice. Bad marksmanship by me. That would have been crazy clutch. Whoa, the defender's just pushing across on the east. Um, all right, if the defender's pushing across on the east with the Basante, then we have to win this flank. So let's get to it. Let's try and win this flank then. Let's try and win this flank, he says gets into position, starts wailing on a T-44. Just to put into perspective how good this tank is, it's kind of statistically a lot like a T-44, but just with preferential matchmaking, so it never has to meet tier 10s. It's actually wild when I think about it. Oh, that projector's getting clamped. Projetto's blaming the team right now because of the EBR on the enemy team. But really, it's his fault because he missed as well as me. If only he had armor. Like a Type 59. You know? God, this tank is great when I think about it. What an absolute powerhouse. Definitely one of the better premium tanks, even these days. Just casually bouncing a 300mm pen. High explosive anti-tank TD at the back. I don't think I'm still spotted. Oh, I clearly am. Wow, I hit him even with a dead gunner there. Slowly grinding out this Pantera. Whoa, not a good shot. Should have hit that one. Nice. Good stuff. Okay, I know there's an SU back there. I'm going to tell my team. SU on 30 p.m. What's that Skoda doing? Holy moly, the enemy team are playing really aggressively. And when I say really aggressively, I mean they are playing pretty darn well as well with it. Can't get that Skoda. I'll try and hit this batch out. Not quite. All right, what's the plan? So we've got a lot of heavy tanks there who won't push. Um, I think I need to drop back a ridge and try and bait the enemies into a bit of a crossfire. We have strength here, we have strength here. So as, as long as I can try and maybe come and spot for the uh, the Borask over here, I'll try and spot for that T-103 at the bottom, then maybe we can make some plays. But if I get caught here, I'm going to get eviscerated. Oh, God. Please, somebody shoot him. Hold on. How long have I been firing gold for? Oh, no. Have I been firing gold since the beginning of the game? Oh, no. It's because of my pay-to-win loadout. I was wondering why my reticle was green on the defender. Oh, feels bad, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The gold nude, gold nude prophecy. Oh, 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 that's a joke. I just looked down and I saw I didn't have many gold rounds left and I was able to pen a defender and I realized I've been firing gold this whole bloody game. Oh, no, no, no. Not like this. No wonder my shells have been working so well. Nice position here. Look how solid this tank is, you know? Just working a ridge line, grinding out your opponents. Can I come back into this game? If I can, it'll be huge. Huge. That shell lost. You wanna fight me? Nobody's gonna shoot him? 
Really? Well, if you don't kill him, then the Basante will kill me. Nice, nice, nice. Come on, team. Believe. I'm going to switch to a gold round here for the Shigoda, I think. So I just get 2,500 uh, spawning on that play? Oi, oi, oi. I need every single hit point I can get right now. This is so close. Come on, baby. I don't want to get caught by the engine pans. I don't want to get caught by the Basante. Do you think the engine pans will come back up against me? He probably will. The IS-5 is probably going to kill my friends unless I can do something. <gasps> There's the Basante. Oh, is he behind a ridge? Oh, that's a huge shot. I don't have to worry about being flanked now. What should I do right now? I know there's an SU up in the corner. Maybe try and kill the Skoda? I'm gonna get flanked in a second. I'm still firing gold, for goodness sake. Oh well, this game's so close. Might as well go full gold with the Type 59 gold, right? How did my team not manage to get that shell in? How can they not be hitting the engine panzer cleaner? I'm going to get flanked by an IS-5 soon. Oh, well, what are you going to do? We'll play to the T-34-3. I'm sorry, but these two players at the back, they should have done more. Why are you sniping in a Boras? Why didn't you go and try and make, like, a crossplay and try and actually get something? You know, I can understand the STA-1. That's fine. The STA-1 was doing his thing. You know, it's a sniping tank tree tank. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like the Boras could have got me a little bit more there. Well, holy moly, dudes. This was a close game. Uh, 2,500 damage and 2,000 spotting. Uh, I felt like I played okay this game. I, I should have done a little bit more. Uh, probably. I didn't realize I was firing gold the whole time. <laughs> I specifically switched from my pay to win roleplay loadout for of course the tank that's the most expensive in the game i don't play with those poor people rounds <laughs> to uh, then i it started loading the gold at the beginning of the game anyway because of course if you switch from a loadout that has only gold rounds to a loadout that has regular rounds then it doesn't do that all right so let's see if my team can be able to take down the rest of this game borask misses his misses his first shot borask misses his second shot yeah, I think there was quite a lot of missing from you, Mr. Borask. The IS-5 is plowing in, the T-34-3 is getting a crossfire, and the whole of the enemy team is attacking all at the same time. If only the Borask had used maybe some of his hit points before it was now a 1 versus 6 situation, then perhaps we could have won. Probably one of the, the lesser sniping tanks, especially when you're on full hit points. If they'd gone and got in the dip with the Skoda, maybe I could have isolated the Indian Panzer. That's really what I should have done. Um, if I could, if I could turn back, uh, time, <laughs> I would, uh, probably have attacked the Skoda T-56 instead and not got myself into a crossfire from the West. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the gold Type 59. A win and a loss. Two very solid tanks. And that is because, well, solid games for a solid tank. And that's because this is a performer. Even after all these years, especially with all of the buffs that Wargaming have given this tank, I'd say it's probably one of the better premium tanks available. The only issue that it has is that these days, you don't meet nearly as many Tier 6 and Tier 7 tanks that Type 59 used to be the predator of. Ah, oh, what's my... Re oh, no! 79,000 credits! Oh, well, I made 50,000 anyway, profit. Um, but yeah, a bit of a stinker there with firing the gold. Well, the Borat, to be fair, the Boras did do more damage than me. Um, but I don't think they did the 2,000 spotting. No. Well played to this T-34-3. It was a good player and you played nice and harassed through there. Uh, they just had a had a half-decent team. The Indian Pans are up on the ridge line as well. GG, well played. So the Type 59 gold, is it worth it? No, this tank isn't worth 25,000 gold. I think that you could get something like a 122TM, which I think a lot of you probably have from your loot boxes. And while it's going to have a less flashy, more boring playstyle, this will be the more solid choice for a lot of players. Just to have that kind of upper hull armor, to have that very reliable gun that hits harder 
with better gun depression and better accuracy, this just feels like the more consistent tank. And its DPM is so bad that I don't even bother to use a gun rammer on this thing. It's, it still seems to work out for me. Unless, of course, I'm using my kind of combat build where I like to use a gun rammer turbo and vents, which if you want to see me playing the 122TM, go and check out my final video of 20. 21 or first video of 2022 whichever way you want to look at it so all in all i wouldn't spend 25,000 gold on this tank i think there are better ways to spend your money both in real life and also in game but if you're a bit of a whale and you've got a lot of gold left over why not have a bid and see if you manage to get lucky but honestly i wouldn't overpay for this thing you'll probably regret it come the black market when there are going to be actual new tanks going into the game and let's be honest the best things of the Under the Hammer event will undoubtedly be the new tanks like the AMBT, which have new novel playstyles and are actually, well, there, while there will be more AMBTs in the game than Gold Type 59s from that perspective, I still feel like something like this that isn't just a reskin is way better bang for buck. Or alternatively, you know, the fact that there's the uh, Object 268 version 5 in the game as well. This was a great pickup from the Under the Hammer. I will make a final mention that I'm kind of disappointed with the the final two sales wargaming. Why do you just keep copy pasting old rare tanks that you've sold back into it? Uh, firstly, it depreciates the value of those rare tanks. And secondly, when there's an opportunity to be able to have a final special hurrah, maybe with like a micro patch and then adding in uh, a very rare vehicle to try and trick all of the leaking websites out there, then, uh, yeah, I feel that this is a bit of a uh, a weak one to end what has been a pretty cool event for all of the whales out there. And let me know in the comments down below whether Wargaming managed to get the harpoon into any of you and how much you're going to bid for the Type 59 gold. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.